Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This week we're going to be doing cookie jars part two. So if you were here last week I showed you guys how to do a cookie jar where the lid actually settles into the jar almost like a gallery lid. This week I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a lid with a flange on the bottom. So there's a couple of different reasons why I like this style as opposed to the other one. I wouldn't say I have much of a favorite but this can be great for a variety of reasons. One, you do have a little bit more wiggle room with these as far as fitting goes. So if your skills aren't quite there yet and you know, you're not quite there on the tight fit, this is gonna allow for a little bit more space there. Another really awesome reason to do this jar as opposed to the last one is if you end up throwing a pot, that's actually how this one started, where I threw this pot and I just decided afterwards, I was like, you know what, this is a really good shape for a jar, but I didn't make that little gallery for my lid to sit into. And so instead of it being too late, I went ahead and did a different type of lid. And so these guys can be really awesome for deciding that you want to cook your jar after you end up actually making the initial jar itself. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, everyone. So what we're going to want is our pot that we want to make a lid for. I went ahead and did this one before the video, just so that way we can save some time here. And you're gonna wanna use your calipers for this. This is gonna measure. So you wanna use these and measure the interior of this, right where this pot opens up. You can go ahead and measure a little bit smaller than the inside here, if you are worried about that. So I think I'm right about there. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch the bats here. I'll set this one off to the side. So we'll go ahead and start with our lid. All right, so we are centered. Now we're gonna wanna go ahead and open this up a little bit. We wanna kind of have some sort of an idea of how wide we're doing this. So I'm looking at this like, this is gonna be a pretty wide lid. So we can go ahead and flatten this out a little bit if you have a wider pot. And I just like to use this part of my hand just to kind of get an even pressure all the way through. All right. All right, so that's closer to the size we want. So now once we have this, we're gonna go ahead and open this up just a little bit, just like how we would throw a normal pot. We really don't wanna try and go all the way down to the bottom. When we open this up, we kind of want to bring this as far out as we have our measurements. So I'm gonna try and drag this basically all the way to the edge here, which is why that's the size that I left my center piece at. So we'll go ahead and we'll open this up. And you always gotta remember to compress your bottoms so that way things don't crack later. this about here this is a bit wider but that's okay so if you guys have watched my planter and chips and salsa dish how to split clay in half this is going to be a pretty similar method so basically what we're gonna do is instead of grabbing all of this to start lifting I'm just going to grab this outer edge here this top part here we're gonna leave a little bit at the bottom this is essentially going to be our flange now we do kind of want to figure out where this is sitting because what you want is this to sit directly inside of this, which actually is pretty damn close right about now. So go ahead and work the rest of that clay because we can always trim stuff off later. is right about there. You want to make sure that this is level at the bottom part because that's going to be the part that actually sits on top of it because if this is too wide but this fits perfectly you're just going to have a lid that doesn't actually settle into it. It's just going to kind of barely sit on top. So you want to make sure that this is pretty level here. Now you also want to think about fit. So I like to use these wooden tools to make sure that this is about a right angle down here so that way we don't end up having half it fitting, the other half not, because it likes to flare out where my finger was at. So go ahead and try and make this as much of a right angle as we can. The last thing you want is this top part to be further out than the bottom. 
that's going to make for a very unsettled lid. So I like to use this wooden tool to get myself a nice 90 degrees. And it's a little bit further out, so let's go ahead and bring this in a bit. And a lot of this is just kind of trial and error. Sometimes I do recommend doing like two lids per pot so that way you can end up figuring out which one works best later. For me, I really like a nice snug fit, but a lot of the times because of that, my stuff doesn't work out. So I always end up making a backup. All right, let's go ahead and stop this. And I think that should be good. So that is right about there at the bottom here. Now, what I was saying about wiggle room in the beginning here is however wide this is, as long as this will fit inside of it, this kind of gives you that overhang. And so if this is a little bit too small, but this is wider, essentially this will still fit on top. It might wiggle around when it's actually sitting on your jar, but at least this will hold on top of it and not end up being, you know, that it just falls right through if the whole thing is too small. So the more precise you get, usually the smaller this will end up being. But you can also use that for a decorative aspect. Sometimes I like to decorate the top like that. I don't want a ton of overhang on my jar. I usually like to have like a little bit, but not too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of this off. I usually cut all the way down and I'll find an edge to stop it at. And I always like to clean up bottom so essentially what we're doing is we are throwing this upside down now if you wanted a butter jar the ones where you know the water will sit at the bottom and the butter stays good this will be the type of wood that you end up doing you'll just end up leaving a lot of extra clay here to make this a bit taller and so that way that settles all the way in there but for now we're just working on the basics but if that is something you're interested in this video is also helpful for that I don't feel like I need any of this extra stuff here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off some of this excess because I just don't need this. I'll take about half that size. Again, you can always cut off clay, but you can't re-add it. So I always start large and then kind of trim off where it's needed. I always go ahead and do one last check with my calipers. So does this fit and all the way down to the bottom here? See, now after I adjusted that, it's a little too large. So I'll go ahead and use my finger to kind of get that in one more time. Try this again. I'm feeling like that angle kind of came back. So let's clean that up. Yeah, I checked this so many times. I'm a bit neurotic about it, but that's just me. All right, I think we're good. All right, everyone, so there you have it. That is jars part two and throwing with a flange. So essentially once this is all dry, you can go ahead and set this top part onto your jar. And if you wanna sculpt a little knob or throw one on the wheel, that is totally up to you guys. But if you liked this video, go ahead and hit like, subscribe, and I will see you all next week.